Thank you, thank you so very much. Good morning. morning. That's such a wonderful welcome, always a wonderful welcome for me when I come here. I tell you, you guys are something else. (laughs) How are you today, though? How? How are you today? Yes, shout it from the rafters. We are talking today about transformation, and the title of my talk is Take Your Foot Off the Brake. And I want to anchor this lesson in consciousness with an affirmative statement that, of what we can expect or what we can achieve. I accept God's purpose for my life, and I move powerfully into the dynamic individual I'm meant to be. So can we take that in parts? I'll affirm it first and then you affirm it with me. I accept God's purpose for my life. I accept God's purpose for my life. And I move powerfully into into the dynamic individual I'm meant to be. You sound like you want something. (laughs) Very good. Spiritual transformation, friends, is a conscious choice. It's a desire sometimes that is characterized by a longing for something deeper, some meaning. We even ask, is this all there is to life? I want to know something deeper. Surely, God must have more for me than this. Friends, it is at this time, this very moment, that we must realize that my foot is on the brake. Because the normal response in you should be to shift gears, you see. Shift your awareness so that you are realigned with the Father within and that you open yourselves to the inflow of the intelligence of spirit to move us from a life that is in shambles to a life of order and harmony. Oh, yes. <laughs> Pema Chodron, I don't know if I'm pronouncing her name correctly, but those of you who, who know her name, you just know who I'm talking about, a Buddhist nun and a teacher who was asked to be director of the first Buddhist uh, monastery in North America, it's in Nova Scotia, Canada. And she found herself at that place of transformation where all the things or all the ways that she presented herself to the world, all the ways she shielded herself from situations and circumstances and conditions, the ways she deluded herself about who she was, the ways she maintained a well-polished self-image, all of it just fell apart. And no matter how she manipulated situations to maintain that facade, it was futile. She could not fix it, you see. There was no place, she said, that she could hide. Would you say she's in need of transformation? She was right. And in her books, When Things Fall Apart, she says, anyone who stands on the edge of the unknown, fully in the present, without reference point, experiences groundlessness. And that is when, it is at that very time when our understanding goes deeper. That is when we find that the present moment is pretty, a pretty vulnerable place to be, you see. And it is also a completely 
tender place to be at the same time. Friends, it is in such moments that you should draw near to the Father within, for he is your true north. And he is calling you to come up higher on the evolutionary plane of life. He is saying to you that you need to be the dynamic individual you are created to be, but change has to happen. We mistakenly believe, you see, that we are the ones running our show. Oh, yes. And when we run out of steam, when we run out of ideas, when we run out of support, I'm saying to you this morning, don't hide. Recognize that these are markers that precede spiritual transformation and a richer, a, a fuller life. And they're simply just making themselves known to you. So you can do something. You can let go of personal control and let God have full control. Can you agree with me this morning that is, it is in these times that it is a state of wholeness that we are seeking? Can I get a nod or something? <laughs> yes. You're seeking a reason for being, a spiritual purpose that we can live by, something you can see or delineate. We want to align with the will of God and allow him to give us a new dimension, a new meaning to our lives. We, we want to just let go like Jesus and say, thy will be done. Not my will. I chuck it. Not my will. Thy will be done. You see, for transformation to be effective, God must have our attention and he must have our willingness. He does not force us to do anything because you have free will just like he does. Entrapment is not his style. He resides at the center of your being as the Christ of God, and you are his unique, unrepeatable expression of life. You are his image likeness. You are a Christed being. You, having known that, I mean, when you know that he's right there within you, where are you going to hide? <laughs> Where are you going to hide? But it becomes your job, you see, to release and let go of that nature that keeps us imprisoned in limitations of every kind. Saying yes to the process of transformation will help us achieve that. Just take a moment. Say yes before it brings you to that place where you have to put the brakes on. Say yes to transformation. But we must give ourselves to it, you see. We have to lean into it. Our conscious mind must become faithful, it must become willing, it must become receptive and responsive to the work of the Christ mind in our whole being before we can move into the subconscious mind and expose those parts of ourselves that need healing. That subconscious mind needs healing. Kate Wolf 
Kate Wolf has a song, and, and she captures it very well. I'm sure you all know it. Give yourself to love, if love is what you're after. Open up your heart to the tears and the laughter. Just give yourself to love. Give yourself to love. It's not always going to be a piece of cake. <laughs> Open up to the tears and the laughter. So I'm saying to you this morning, give yourself to divine love so that the work can begin in your life. And know that any pain that you experience is your unwillingness to lean into the process of transformation. It is your resistance to change that keeps your foot on the brake. And in our effort to, it, it's also in our effort to stay with the familiar, to stay with the comfortable. To, to maintain that facade, like payment, you see. Even though we know, deep in our hearts, that this is what we need to get rid of, we still want to hold on tooth and nail. In his book, Invitation to a Journey, Robert Mulholland says, the path to spiritual wholeness lies in my increasingly faithful response to the one whose purpose shapes my path, whose power liberates me from the crippling bondages of my previous journey, and whose transforming presence meets me at every turn on the road. Friends, that turn in the road is just a fancy way of saying you are now at that place of transformation again. It's time to change again. It's time to release. It's time to give up some of those lim limiting ideas and beliefs in order to align and accept a greater expression of the expansiveness of the Christ spirit that is at the center of your being. I want to explore with you a metaphor of transformation, one that the prophet Ezekiel shared with the Hebrew people to describe for them and to encourage them to heal from the separation, their separation from God. He described for them a process of purification and uh, refinement of the soul. And he described it as silver refined. You know you are expressing a consciousness of separation, my friends. Tongue tied. You know you are expressing a consciousness of separation from God when you feel that he's not with you. Have you been there? That he has forgotten you. That he no longer hears your prayers. That you are the only one that's floating your boat. <laughs> Friends, it is possible to be in a crowd and feel alone. It is possible to feel out of touch with everything and everyone around you, and yet they're being so marvelous to you. You're eating and drinking and interacting with people who know and love you, but you still feel alone. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> you go to work every day doing the work, but you're feeling just a bit detached. You see, in these times, you can turn your mind to the truth of your being. If you can speak into your life, Affirmations that renew you. I am God's precious child, you can say. First, you can say to yourself, God is everywhere present. Therefore, he's here with me right now. I am his precious child. Therefore, I know he loves me. 
And even though I do not know my rightful place in this moment, I will be steadfast, I will be faithful, I'll be courageous in my recognition that he is the only presence and power in my life and in the world. And I am not powerless. I am powerful to change this experience. I will take my foot off the brake and I will lean into the wisdom and guidance of spirit. Don't forget, too, friends, that in this community, you have prayer chaplains that are ready to help you. They will stand with you and pray affirmatively with you. Scripture says, where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am in the midst. So they, they are ready to help to uplift you and set you on a path of light so that in time you will come to recognize the presence within you, the reflection of the Christ spirit as you. In biblical days, you see, they did not have the great minding technologies that we have today. The refiner would take the ore and he would hammer it and place it in his crucible and he would put it over a fire. A, a, a crucible is a, a thing that can, a cup that can withstand high temperatures. He then builds a fire and he fans the flames until they're leaping in the fireplace and he places the crucible on the fire and he stands there and he watches it. And suddenly the dross comes to the top and the silver goes to the bottom and he skims off the dross that's floating on the top, leaving the silver liquid to settle at the bottom. He then builds the fire some more to a higher intensity and he watches it again until the dross comes up and he skims it off and he, and he puts the crucible back. He stokes the fire and he keeps stoking it until there is no dross coming up. The material in the vessel, of course, it hisses and it spits as oxygen is released and the dross is no longer there. Finally, he can see his clear reflection in the crucible. The silver alone is left, and he can see his face. Friends, God is that refiner. God is like the refiner. He never leaves you nor forsakes you. All through your painful, challenging experience, all through your process, God has not forgotten you. He's skimming away the dross as you release and let go. He's not taking it. You release it. You release it, then he skims it so that the imprisoned splendor that is within you can come forth. God is a God of love. And you should know that he's always going to bring you to that place, your rightful place. But the law that he acts by is precise, it's exact, and if you do not say yes to transformation, if you do not put that law into motion for yourself, you're not going anywhere. Once you say yes to transformation, you are saying, I welcome my best self now. Oh, yes. You see, some of us can do a fine job of dressing up the outside. And we can do a fine job of changing the mental state. You know, we begin to tout affirmations one after another. We even change our actions. We even change the way we think. But there's still something left. The subconscious is there. It's still left there. And that subconscious responds to triggers. Where did 
that come from? <laughs> you remember that? Saying something, and you know, you're now a new thought person, and that came out of your mind. Where did that come from? <laughs> That's from the subconscious. The trigger is there. You see, the reason why the subconscious is like that is because you stuff your stuff down in there and you stuff it there and hide it there because you can't manage it in the conscious mind. If you had it in your conscious mind every day, it would be too painful. So you stuff it away and you forget about it. But the day, I promise you, the day will come when you can look at it and you can say, huh, that's a dross, skim it. <laughs> yes, that day will come. Turn to God in prayer. Holy Spirit, I do not know what this phobia, this anxiety, this pain, this nightmare, this depression, this negative emotion is about, but I am willing for it to go now. Cast your, or send your flares, the flares of the Holy Spirit. Let that fire of the Holy Spirit move through my mind and body to make me whole and well. Amen? Amen? Friends, when God is the refiner in your life, what people see as a basket case is no more. What, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. What, the, what they now see is a powerful, evolving soul. And you have reached that place through a daily practice of the principles of, of, of spirit and through prayer and meditation. Oh, yeah. How do I recognize you now? Give me two minutes to wrap up. Yes. <laughs> Let me wrap it up now. <laughs> two minutes. How do I recognize you when you have been transformed? The consciousness shifts. False pride surrenders to humility. The personal control that you have over things now shifts to trusting God. You just trust people. She can do it. I'll leave her to it. I'm not on top micromanaging anymore. I let God be God in you. You see, let go of the personal control and trust God. There is no longer investment in the personal outcomes, for your will is now in subjection to the divine will. God's will for me is what? Absolute good. So I can trust it. Desire shifts to acceptance, for you know now that God has everything already done for you. Your life is already out there. It's just time for you to claim it. The big thing is that now you identify negative situations right away and you take care of them immediately so you don't have to go stuffing that subconscious anymore. So now you keep identified with the Christ of your being, who now takes over your life. Oh, New Thought Spiritual Center. <laughs> I see you as God's precious child with your foot off the brake. Bye-bye.